Hi everyone, good morning. Today is 15th of November and welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. So guys, in the today's video, we are going to discuss the entire Hindu newspaper. We'll take all the articles along with the background, the way forward. And if you are new here, I would like to tell you that you can also download the explainer PDF. Now, in this explainer PDF, we have given the notes of all the articles that had come. We had simplified the articles and along with the background, these PDF notes have been given. You can download these notes from the Telegram channel. The link for the Telegram channel has been given in the description box in YouTube. Moreover, you can visit the Telegram and can search their channel by typing Thinking Palette by Sahil. Now, before taking up these particular articles, first of all, let's take the uh, overview of the entire newspaper so that we can understand that what type of articles are important, what articles might not be that important and what is the placement of the articles. So, if you want to read, you can do that. Now, the first page, uh, the atomic energy, hydrogen power, India's net zero plan. Now, this particular article talks about the long term strategy to uh, tackle the problem of climate change that has been released. We'll take this particular article. Retail inflation cools to 6.77% in October. Now, guys, understand this particular thing. You are not required to trace the every month's inflation, okay, that in month of August, September, October, what it was. Just understand this particular thing that right now, from the past nine months, we are seeing that the inflation is outside the comfortable range which have been provided by the Monetary Policy Committee. So, the Urjit Patel Committee in the past have provided that inflation in India needs to be in the band of 2 to 6 percent okay in the band of 2 to 6 percent but now we see that the inflation is going above the 6 percent from so many of the months which shows that inflation is little bit on to the uh, onto a higher side fine no need to track the data and the details as a month by month data is not that much important supreme court says forced conversions might may affect the national security we'll see this particular article then guys, the city section, uh, find the crime and related issues, fine. Uh, the regional politics, not important for the examinations, fine. So, uh, no need to go into these particular articles. Moreover, understand this particular thing. As you might be having some different edition of the Hindu newspaper, the regional section is something which will differ. And in regional section, majorly the regional politics, advertisements and all such kind of a things are there, fine. So, nothing much important. will directly be coming to the editorial page. And on the editorial, the shape of the Indian economic pie must change. We'll see this article. It is connecting the welfareism and economy. Good article. The Iran protest with respect to the women's rights, etc. We'll see this particular article also. Fine. The tradition and the talent England's win in the T20 World Cup. Okay. With respect to the exam academic substances, not there in the article. Where no child is left behind. We'll see this particular article with respect to the examination. Then uh, a surprising stand on EWS. So AIDMK had... Uh, have taken a risk by supporting the verdict and basically what is the uh, in Tamil Nadu the political parties what is their view on to the EWS reservation with respect to the examination article doesn't contains much of the academic substance then climate change debate stall while the earth heats up so here guys there are some of the graphs which are pointing out that how the climate change is happening we will briefly take this article also the significance of the Bali G20 summit will take this article what are the hurdles to building school for tribal? We'll take this article also. Then the text and the context. Browser extension to supercharge your productivity. So there are some of the Chrome extensions that have been given which can be used. Not important for the UPSC. Then moving on. Center seeks time from the Supreme Court in the Places of Worship Act. Uh, act case. Now you see this particular thing guys. That actually we have. We have one particular act that is the, uh, uh, the Places of Worship Act. Now, this Places of Worship Act had provided that the, uh, it, uh, this particular act had provided the character of religious places will be intact as they were in 1947, though there are certain exceptions. Now, in this particular thing, guys, there is a, a kind of an issue going on from the past so many of the months. It has been, you might be seeing this thing that there were many of the shrines which belonged to the Hinduism. They were the temples or they were the Hindu shrines. They, got converted in mosque or such kind of a structure. So, there is a demand that we need to change this particular act because over the period of time, there are the invasions which happened onto some shrines. Their character got changed. Now, they are to be restored. That is actually a thing. I deliberately will not go too much into the detail in this particular thing because guys, uh, the Gyanwapi case and all these particular kind of a things are little, they are politicized kind of a thing that had become over the past few months. And in the UPSC, such region, uh, religious politicization and also such kind of a things don't come. So, no need to go too much into this particular article. 
then the trade with the india doubled to 2 billion dollar in past 2 years in norway okay then further moving on after that guys the political articles etc has been given no need to go into these articles then the project to track small fishing vessels now makes progress this is an important article we'll see with respect to the examination the coastal security of india biden's uh, biden z took the response uh, uh, to, to responsibly manage competition and rising uh, tension so guys the uh, basically joe biden and xi jinping's meet has happened we'll see that what has come out of this zelensky visit kherson now uh, see this particular thing that as we are seeing that the russia ukraine war is going on fine in sri lanka economic crisis is going on every day development is not important for the examination fine wholesale inflation slipped to single digit okay so again that inflation and uh, then the corporate trends etc have been given and then we have the sports page so this is guys the overview of the entire newspaper fine that objective to show you the overview is just of one thing that suppose in future if you wanted to stop seeing this newspaper analysis video you should be having an ability to understand that which articles you need to focus simply every article because it has been published in the newspaper is important for upsc no that's not the case now starting up so guys let's uh, take first of all the gs quotation now the gs quotation are important for our answer writing because when we are writing the answers we can complement them with these gs quotations plus in the essay writing these gs quotations are going to help you so today we'll take the quotation from the jf kennedy so the kennedy jf kennedy says that the ignorance of one voter in a democracy impairs the security of all now this particular quotation is very impactful can be used in the issue answers related to the gs paper number two issues of electoral democracy now you see this particular thing that often the voters are ignorant in a democracy for example either they think that how their one vote will impact secondly sometimes they think that okay if they have a kind of a dissent against some majority government and they think that they are the minority okay and their dissent might not bring any kind of a change so often the voters are ignorant about their role in the democracy and that particular ignorance if it will be held by everyone the democracy will be meaningless so even the ignorance of one voter in a democracy will impair the security of all will impair the democratic spirit for the entire nation fine very good quotation can be used in gs2 as well as in essays now moving on and let's take the first article okay so the first article atomic energy hydrogen power india's net zero plan now what this particular article is all about this particular article guys is talking about the india's long term strategy to deal with the climate change challenge and this particular article will see with respect to the gs paper number 3 gs paper number 3 issues of environment issues of environment ecology and conservation okay now uh, actually right now the cop27 is undergoing okay cop27 is going on in the egypt and as that particular thing is going on there are the multiple developments that will be coming on fine in the past we have seen the issue of the climate finance that have been raised by the developing countries for example india they have asked the developed world that in 2009 you promised that 100 billion dollar will be given by 2020 but up till now those 100 billion dollars have not come so climate finance have been raised now what india has done very important article for that particular point now before going on in this particular direction guys understand some basic and uh, some basic and background informations that i would like to tell you now you see this particular thing that actually in 2015 2015 there was the paris agreement that was taken and as part of the paris agreement the countries they have taken the indc INDC stands for intended nationally determined contributions so INDCs are the country's targets that what they will do in order to reduce the impact of climate change in order to reduce the carbon emissions what they are going to do so all the countries have taken their respective INDCs okay now INDCs INDCs simply provide that what the countries will do between 2015 to 2030 so INDCs have a kind of a medium term horizon now a question comes that okay medium term horizon is fine but what is the long term strategy of the countries how in the long term they are going to uh, tackle the problem of the climate change now understand this particular thing that actually guys what has happened what has happened as a part of as a part of the just a minute 
as a part of the climate change negotiations that are going on fine uh, basically there were there was a requirement that the long term document is to be provided by 2022 by all the countries who are the part of the UNFCCC united nation framework convention on climate change so all the countries under the UNFCCC they have to provide by 2020 a long term document okay now this document is officially called as LTLEDS which stands for which stands for just a minute long term low emission development strategy up till now the 57 countries have have submitted this long term emission development strategy to the unfccc now india has also submitted their long term strategy and india including india now there are total 57 countries which have submitted this long term strategy now in this particular direction guys understand what this long term strategy is all talking about now you see this thing there is some consensus that has been met for example uh, we need to cut the emissions we need to cut the emissions by 45% by 2030 and we need to achieve the net zero around 2050 carbon neutrality is to be achieved by 2050 now you see this thing though the different different countries different different countries have different targets for example india's carbon neutrality target is 2070 then there are other countries whose carbon neutrality tar target some has 2060 some has 2040 but on a whole for the entire globe the carbon neutrality by 2050 is to be achieved this is a kind of a uh, a kind of an expectation that we have so what the countries are doing in this particular direction for that thing these long term low emission development strategies are to be discussed how they are going for the transition of their economies how they are moving from the non-renewable to renewable energies into the long term that strategy document is to be provided how they are trying to achieve their NDC target so this is something that was to be provided now India has provided their long term strategy now in the COP27 now guys understand this particular thing what India has provided India has provided that India has a vision India has a vision to accommodate new technological developments in order to make their economy carbon neutral it provides that first of all what India is focusing on India is focusing on to use maximum of electric vehicles so that the vehicular emission which is a major contributor into the carbon emission that particular uh, emit uh, basically the vehicular emissions can be reduced now what government is doing first of all we are bringing the electric vehicles secondly we are also bringing the ethanol blending program now what is the ethanol blending program basically we aim that in the petrol in the petrol the ethanol will be blended now as the petrol as the ethanol will be blended fine the ethanol's carbon footprint will be nearly zero right now you see this particular thing suppose we are burning one liter petrol and one liter petrol is let's say emits the carbon let's say 10 gram carbon is emitted by the one liter petrol what we can do we can mix this particular petrol with the ethanol for example in one liter petrol it can be the case that uh, 900 ml 900 milliliter is petrol okay uh, and 100 milliliter is ethanol so basically what will be done if earlier the emission carbon emission was 10 gram now the carbon emission will be 9 gram why because this ethanol its carbon footprint will not be there so we want to blend more and more ethanol with the petrol now in this particular direction guys india had recently adopted the e 20 by 25 strategy e20 by 25 strategy what it is it is that we will be increasing the ethanol blending to 20% by 2025 it means that into the petrol 20% will be the ethanol blending that will be done so this is something that is happening moreover in the transportation sector third development that india is focusing on we are shifting towards public transport public transport so when there is a private transport obviously in the private transportation more emissions will be there so on the public transport also we are shifting clear then guys there are specific targets that india has taken okay i will be just be highlighting here number one we are going forward with the national hydrogen mission national hydrogen mission now the national hydrogen mission has been launched in 2021 and we will be we will be using the green hydrogen for the energy requirement now hydrogen can be of different different types green hydrogen is one where the hydrogen that is being retrieved in that also there uh, is the renewable energy that has been used understand this particular thing 
See, the hydrogen can be used as an energy source. But how to get that hydrogen? For that, there is, uh, basically for that, to get that hydrogen, electrolysis is required. For that electrolysis, you can use the energy. Abhi, wo energy kaha se hai? If that energy is also green, so the hydrogen that will be developed, we call it as a green hydrogen. So India is trying to become the green hydrogen hub. And for that thing, National Hydrogen Mission has been launched. After that, guys, we are also increasing the nuclear capacity. And by 2032, by 2032, there will be the 3x increase into the nuclear capacity. Right now, around 2% of India's electricity comes from the nuclear power plants. will increase it to 3x by 2032. Then, ethanol blending target, I told you, 20% ethanol blending will be done by 2025. Maximizing the use of electric vehicles. Increased climate finance to be provided by the developed nation. Now, this is something which we have emphasized multiple times that the developed countries need to give, had to give 100 billion dollar by 2020. But now that is not required. Even more is required and around 7 to 11 trillion dollars are needed before 2030. So, this is something where the developed countries need to help. Then after that, we are we are we have provided this particular thing that India's long-term strategy for the climate change is such that we aim to keep the climate change, keep the climate change below 2 degrees Celsius and if possible below 1.5 degrees Celsius. And actually, this was exactly the same thing which was agreed in the Paris. In Paris, we have agreed that see climate change is happening, temperature is increasing. We'll try that it should not go beyond 2 degrees Celsius and if possible 1.5 degrees Celsius. So our long term strategy is based on this particular thing only. Then, as we are talking about guys, some more steps also are there which can be used and which can be complemented as a part of the India's long term strategy. For example, guys, we are also focusing on just a minute. We are also focusing on improving the energy efficiency by perform, achieve and trade scheme. Okay, so energy efficiency right now, guys, there are many of the uh, uh, inefficient ways are there. Fine. For example, the way we uh, light up our houses okay many inefficiencies are there so how to increase the efficiency of the energy for that the perform achievement trade scheme is there national hydrogen mission already i told you then guys we are also focusing on we are also focusing on increasing electrification material efficiency recycling to reduce the emission now electrification is also very much important understand this particular thing today today many of the houses today many of the houses they don't have electric connections because of that particular thing they are dependent on other crude of sources of energy then india's forest cover tree cover is also something which we are at the same time focusing on now when we talk about the india's forest tree cover you know this particular thing that the forest plays the role of carbon sequestration they absorb the carbon dioxide now india's forest cover they absorb 50 percent of india's carbon dioxide emission this was in 2016 so understand this particular thing that even if we revive even if we restore our forest they can become a very important carbon sink and we have provided this particular thing that we will as a part of the ndc indc's in 2015 we had provided that 2.5 to 3 billion ton of additional carbon sequestration will be developed it means we will deploy more forest so that they can absorb more carbon additional 2.5 to 3 billion carbon sequestration capacity we are going to deploy is it clear or not and guys this is something which is very important and please you should also write it in i have also discussed it this few months back when it happened now as we talk about the indcs as we talk about the indcs what india has done india has revised its indcs recently so india has revised revised the indcs for example india says that half of the electricity will be derived from the non fossil fuel sources by 2030 okay this is something okay then the next is that we have provided that will reduce the emission intensity by 45 percent below 2005 level by 2030 now understand that we are talking about that carbon emissions will be reduced by 45 percent okay just a minute Yes. So what we are talking about, we are talking about that the carbon emissions will be reduced by 45%. Now understand this particular thing, 45% of what? 45% of what? So 
2005 has been taken as a baseline. So in 2005, whatever the carbon emission was happening on that particular level will reduce it to it by 45 percent. And by what year will it achieve that? Will achieve that by 2030. Now I told you that India has revised its INDC target. Now see this particular thing. Originally the target was originally the target was of 30. Uh, the originally the target was 33 to 35 percent. Just a minute. Originally, the target was 33% to 35% reduction was done at 2005 level by 2030. But now, we increased it from 33% to 45%. So, this is one of the INDC that we have revised. Then, guys, the second thing I told you that we have provided that half of India's electricity, that is 50% of India's electricity will come from the renewable energy. Now, in 2015, original target was 40%. So, from 40%, we have increased to 50% and from 33%, we have increased to 45%. So, this is the India, India's contribution as how we have even revised our INDC targets. Okay, so this is something that we are doing. Moreover, India has again emphasized that India's long-term document has emphasized that we need trillions of dollars and for that climate finance by developed countries will play a very important role. Though developed countries need to provide them finance, technology, concessional loans, etc. That is all about this particular article, guys. Okay. So, this is a very, very important article and the long-term document has finally been submitted by India. The features and all such kind of a thing you should remember and around this particular line, a question can even be asked into the exam. Now, moving to the next article. Project to track small fishing vessels now make progress. Now, this particular article, guys, will be important for GS paper number 3. GS paper number 3, coastal security. Coastal security. And as the coastal security is very important for India's internal security, so indirectly in the India's internal security related issues also, we can take this particular article. Now, before going in this particular article, let me give you some of the background information. See this particular thing that when we talk about the India's coastline, we see this particular thing that India has the coastline of more than 7500 kilometers. And often this particular coastline, it often if the coastline is not protected, then there can be certain imminent dangers that can come to India from the India's, from the waters, from the shores. Understand this particular thing. When we talk about the 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks that happened, in that particular thing, we find that the terrorists, they came from the waters. So, there was the hostile ship that was used by the terrorists to gain entry in India. So, therefore, protecting our coastlines is very important for protecting or for conserving the internal security. Clear? Now, Understand this particular thing, sea surveillance has become an important dimension in the national security of India. And for sea surveillance, what has happened? An automatic identification system, an automatic identification system was made compulsory for the ships of India. Now, all the ships who are above 20 meters, who are above 20 meters, they have to, they have to deploy this automatic identification system. Just a minute, they have to deploy the automatic identification system in their ships. Okay. But when we talk about the ships that are being used by the fishermen or the ships which are being used by for the other purposes, majority of ships in India are not very big ships, they are the small ships. Clear? We have nearly 3 lakh ships in India which are used for other purposes, shipping, etc. Out of them, 2.5 lakh are the ships which are less than 20 meters. So, what has happened on that particular ships, the transponders, the identification devices were not fixed up till now. So, what happened? National Committee on Strengthening Maritime and the Coastal Security has proposed that such kind of a thing is needed to be done. Now, what has happened? The process of installing the transponders on the ships who are less than 20 meter, 20, the, the boats who are less than the 20 meters, it has been started in the Tamil Nadu. Now, what this particular thing is, what this particular thing is. So, basically, first of all, what is a transponder? A transponder is a device which enables the two-way communication. Okay, so transponder is an electric device which enables the two-way communication. So, basically, by these particular transponders, if there are the boats which are less than 20 meters, we can communicate with them. We can know their location. We can know their status, whether they are registered in India or whether they are not of Indian origin. So, understand this particular thing. Suppose, suppose, 
these are the india's waters these are the india's waters you it might be exclusive economic zone of india or let's say the territorial waters of india now all the ships who are operating all the ships who are operating they need to have these transponders and identification device now what will happen basically the uh, what will happen when they are plying out into the water there will be the constant communications that will be maintained with these particular ships now if there is any ship which is not having these particular kind of transponders and if the, with that ship the connection cannot be established we might get a signal that okay this might be a hostile ship or that might this might be a foreign ship so every ship has to be registered now how the 2611 terror attack happened there was a ship and we didn't identify that okay this is not an indian ship because by that time that point of a time no such identification was there so what has happened india has provided that identification is necessary earlier for 20 the the boats who were above 20 meters for them it was there now the boats who are less than 20 meters for them also it has been provided okay now understand this particular thing these are transponders they will have the positioning navigation system okay uh, fine and they will enable the two way communication also now we are also running we are also running the real craft what is real craft registration and licensing of the fishing craft now this real craft okay it is a verification and monitoring system for the fishing vessels in india okay this is one development and one more development has happened on this particular front only that is we have started we have started the sea vigil 2022 exercise what is the sea vigil 2022 it is an exercise it is a pan india coastal defense exercise so all the coastal states find they participate in this particular exercise and what they do they actually here we try to validate that whether the maritime security measures are in place or not so i have given you the reference of 2611 attack so as the 2611 attack was executed from uh, from the water the terrorist came so we need to see the preparedness of the coastal states fine for that particular thing this sea vigil 22 exercise is being taken up now this exercise will be taken up take, taken along the entire 7500 kilometer coastline in the exclusive economic zone all the coastal states union territories will be the part of this particular exercise and this exercise aims to test the theater level readiness of uh, uh, to, to to see the theater level readiness of our states to deal with the terrorist and such kind of threats okay fine uh, vessel means ships yes yes dear now moving to the next article the significance of the bali g20 summit the significance of the bali g20 summit now uh, actually what has happened from the 15th of november from the 15th of november that is today the g20 summit in the bali has started and this particular summit which is happening into the bali from here the next presidency will be taken by the india so the presidency will be transferred to the india's hands now what are the important things that will be taken up into the g20 summit in the bali we'll see this particular thing so uh, first of all when we talk about the g20 some of uh, the basic just a minute some of the basic informations we'll take here first of all g20 g20 stands for just a minute g20 stands for the group of 20 which comprises the 19 countries and european union it comprises 19 countries and the european union okay now guys i hope that voice is audible is voice audible to everyone is voice audible to everyone fine so what is g20 g20 is the group of 20 countries fine where there are the 19 countries and european union that is included now this g20 it aims to address the major global issues such as the issues of global economy financial stability climate change sustainable development when we talk about the g20 g20 as a grouping has been conceived in 1999 to deal with the major economic challenges which was there at that point of a time now you see that around 96 97 particularly 97 there was the east asian economic crisis that was going on so it was ex it was felt at that point of a time that for the for the nations who are developing or who are emerging there needs to be one particular kind of a grouping that should be there see the g7 or 
the G8 that was there, it was very much elite. So therefore, there was a kind of a, 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 mid, a, a grouping that was needed for the even industrialized as well as the emerging nations. So the G20s was born. Now when we talk about the G20, since 2008, the G20 has met every year and the yearly summits have happened. Okay, And in this yearly summits, the head of the government or the finance ministers or foreign ministers or the high ranking officials, they participate. Now, when we talk about the G20 countries, G20 countries represent 85% of the global GDP, 75% of the global trade and 66% of the world population. So, in terms of economic clout, in terms of the number of people, demographic clout, it is a very big organization, very big grouping that is the G20. Now, the G20, G20, the 2022 summit that is now being held in the Bali, okay. The, here, what are the important concerns? We are going to see that particular thing. First of all, guys, one thing I want to tell you that right now, that right now the G20 summit is being, that the G20 is being headed by the Indonesia. After Indonesia, the next presidency of the G20 will be taken by the India. And after India, the next presidency will be taken by the Brazil. Okay. Now, you see this particular thing. The next year, there will be the Trioc of G20, which will have three countries, India, Indonesia and Brazil. And all these three countries are the developing countries and it shows the shift towards the developing countries. First of all, what does the Trioc means? What does the Trioc means? So, basically, Trioc. It is a tri Troyoka means the three countries, okay, which where there will be the present president of G20, the past president of the G20 and the next president of the G20. That will, that is the Troyoka. So the next year Troyoka will look something like this, that India will be the president of G20. The past president of G20 would be Indonesia and the next G20 president will be Brazil. So the Brazil, the future president, Fine, we are seeing it from the next year's perspective. The future president, okay, the present presidency of G20 and the past president of G20, all these three countries are the developing countries. So, they basically this particular thing also shows that the global economic agenda is moving towards the global south. So, global south and global north, it is a way to divide, okay, basically global north. These are the developed countries, majorly the countries of Europe as well as the North America. But the global south, it is characterized by the emerging countries. So, next year's Troika will represent the global shift towards the global south. Okay, now what is the agenda of the G20 meet summit that is being organized for the 2020? So the motto is recover together, recover stronger. Now this particular motto has been used into the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic that has happened. So all the countries have to recover together and had to recover stronger. Now in these particular, in this G20 session that is going to be held from today, that is 15th of November, the discussions will be there on, in there will be the three sessions and these three sessions will be talking about the food and energy security, health partnership for global infrastructure and investment because as there can be the future pandemics that can also come. So for that there is needs to be a global infrastructure. Then digital transformation. So these are the three things or on which the sessions will be held. Now in this particular meet there will also be uh, the bilateral meets that are going to held will take that what these bilateral meets are but as a part of this G20 meet Fine. The Indonesia's president, Mr. Jokowi, will lead the leaders to the Indonesian mangroves of Taman Hutan Raya. Now, Taman Hutan Raya's mangroves, they have been restored over the past 30 years. And now these mangroves are covering an area of the 700 acres. So, as a case study, the Indonesia will show to the other countries these mangroves of the Taman Hutan Raya. Okay, now understand this particular thing. The Taman Hutan Raya. It also becomes an important mapping location because often in the prelims examination, these kind of a questions are asked. For example, XYZ location was into the news, it is in which country? Fine, so Taman Hutan Raya, these are the mangroves who have been restored into the Indonesia. Fine, 
now as we talk about the bilateral meetings that are also going to be held in this G20 so there are the two important bilateral meetings that are there number one is the meeting between the Joe Biden and the Xi Jinping that has been held also and will talk also that what has happened there is one more article we'll see in that and the second there is an expected meet that can happen between the India and China between the India and China though up till now there is no official confirmation that definitely it will happen but there is an expectation that between India and China also a bilateral meet can happen and if it happens this will be the first in-person meet between the India and China after the LSE crisis of 2020 began. So this is something that can happen. So guys this is about the overview of the G20 as what is going to be held but as in these next two days that is the 15th and the 16th actually when the meet will happen we'll see that okay on the ground what has outcome okay. Now moving to the next article. What are the hurdles to building schools for tribals? Okay. So uh, basically this particular article guys will see with respect to the GS paper number 2. GS paper number 2 issues of tribal governance. Issues of tribal governance. Now uh, actually what has happened recently a parliamentary standing committee. Recently a parliamentary standing committee had published its report where they are talking about that how the Eklave model residential schools they are running in a kind of a challenge and government might not be able to build the Eklave residential model schools. So because of that particular parliamentary standing committee report this Eklave model school is coming again and again in news and it becomes important. Now understand this particular thing. First of all Eklave model residential schools what they are see this particular thing uh, guys whenever you are talking about the tribals please always keep in mind the punch shield the punch shield okay now many of you might think that the punch shield is a policy with respect to the neighbors no that it is not that punch shield actually we have the two punch shield one punch shield policy is the part of the India's neighborhood policy and there is one more punch shield that is the tribal punch shield. Now the tribal punch shield was given by Jawaharlal Nehru and in the tribal punch shield Jawaharlal Nehru provided this particular thing that the development of tribal people is important but the development of tribal people should not happen as we are going for the development of the mainstream people. De tribal people's development needs to be highly it, it needs to be highly sensitive and we need to we need to be very considerate that we should not develop them on the mainstream line is it clear or not that is something actually in the panchil there are the five principles that are there but the gist of panchil is that a sensitive and a special focus based development of tribal is to be done now actually when we talk about the development of tribal people their education becomes an important thing but we cannot educate them into the schools in which the other people other children are being educated a special schools are also needed for them so therefore government had come out with the government had come out with the eklavya model residential school scheme school scheme and as a part of this eklavya model residential school the plan is to set up the 740 now the number is not that much important but to establish more than 700 Eklavya model residential schools for the tribal students. Now these schools will be built in every sub-district. So in sub-districts where the tribal population is at least 20,000 and where 50% of the population is of tribals. Okay. So in every sub-district where either where the tribal population of 20,000 is there fine or uh, where that has 20,000 odds uh, uh, scheduled tribe population and 50% of the total population in that area wherever it is a tribal these Eklavya residential model schools will be developed there. Now originally the idea of these Eklavya residential model school was conceived in 97-98 and the idea was to provide the quality education to tribal students and there will be the residential facilities also that will be provided to the tribal students. Now these schools were to be developed as the premier schools as the centers of quality education and onto the lines of the Jawahar Navodde Vidalya and Kendri Vidalya as they were designed. Fine. So this is the scheme that is going on. Ministry of Tribal Affairs was the nodal ministry who will be responsible for this particular scheme. Recently in 2018 and 19, there are some changes that have been done in the Eklavya residential model school scheme. What has happened? So Ministry of Tribal Affairs was the nodal ministry who was taking entirely the scheme. But now there are also the National Education Society for Tribal Student Nests and 
स्टेट एजुकेशन सोसाइटी फॉर द ट्राइबल स्टूडेंट सेस्ट सो दीज आर द टू बॉडीज नेस्ट एट द लेवल ऑफ सेंटर एंड सेस्ट एट द लेवल ऑफ द स्टेट हैव बीन हैव बीन क्रिएटेड नाउ दीज बॉडीज विल रन द एकलव्य मॉडल रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल जोन टू द ग्राउंड ओके दिस इज समथिंग दैट हैज हैपन नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द एकलव्य मॉडल रेजिडेंशियल स्कूल द फंडिंग अंडर फॉर दीज पर्टिकुलर स्कूल इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वाई बिकॉज ऑफ बिकॉज देर इज आर्टिकल नंबर टू सेवेंटी फाइव सब क्लोज वन दैट यू माइट हैव हर्ड सो आर्टिकल टू सेवेंटी फाइव प्रोवाइड दैट द ग्रांट इन एड्स आर टू बी प्रोवाइडेड फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द ट्राइबल एरियाज एंड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द आर्टिकल टू सेवेंटी फाइव द एड्स विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू द स्टेट्स वे द ट्राइबल पीपल आर लिविंग फॉर द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द एकलव्य रेजिडेंशियल मॉडल स्कूल्स नाउ वट एक्चुअली हैज हैपन actually there is certain guidelines that are to be followed for developing these eklavya residential model schools so earlier the guideline was that there needs to be 20 acres of land that was needed however this guideline this particular thing changed and now the minimum criteria to establish these schools is that there needs to be at least 50 acres of land on which these eklavya residential model schools will be developed this is something that is there now government uh, recently there is a parliamentary standing committee on social justice and uh, social justice now this parliamentary standing committee has provided that this criteria of having minimum 15 acres of land this particular criteria it is becoming an obstacle in the implementation of the eklavya residential model scheme why because you see this particular thing you see this particular thing uh, actually you see this uh, just a minute so understand this particular thing that first of all the tribal people they are living into the forest the tribal people they are living into the forest and there will be many problems in having the piece of 15 acre of land number 1 number 1 the forest they are protected under the forest conservation act 1980 there are the other acts also into the forest which are applicable and you cannot simply cut down the trees to have this 15 acre of land and secondly whatever the clear lands are there into the forest these lands have been given to the tribal people as a part of their land rights now we have a forest right act of 2006 and forest right act of 2006 recognize the rights of the tribal people over the forested lands so either you will cut down the forest trees and will bring the 15 acre land or you will take the existing land but this land is of the tribal people so how the land of 15 acre will come for this particular school okay this is one problem second problem that is coming here is that actually actually many a times the tribal people are living into the hilly areas they are living into the areas where the left wing extremism is going on in the north east they are living and they are having a 15 acre piece of land might become very difficult and in the eklavya residential model scheme it is very clearly provided that minimum 15 acre land is needed to operate one school so this particular thing is problematic secondly i told you i told you this particular thing in the start that Uh, where the eklavya residential model school will be developed where the population of 20000 tribals is at least living and in the sub district where 50% population is of the tribal okay and 20000 people also need to be there many a number of times many a number of times the tribal people tribal people they are scattered they are scattered it means now suppose there is a one tribal hamlet where there are just 15 20 families that are living okay and that hamlet is let's say 100 kilometers away from any city what about those tribal people's development so 20000 criteria can only be met into the big sub districts but many a times the tribals are living isolated into the forest away from the mainstream population what about them how this eklavya residential model scheme will cater to them so this is one more issue that has come in this particular direction okay so guys this is all about this particular scheme and understand that in the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 there is specifically a topic that is mentioned that is the welfare scheme by the government and its critical evaluation so there we will be using this particular there we will be using this particular idea now moving to the next article where no ch child is left behind now this particular idea we'll see with respect to the gs paper number 2 gs paper number 2 issues related to the education okay now uh, actually recently guys there is a reference that has been given the references references of the human development index hdi okay uh, okay uh, there is one question let's take the question i think there would uh, there would find out such kind of school in every sub district of india because our tribal populations are exist in all over india like any other caste and society uh, okay one thing i want to tell 
इट्स नॉट द केस दैट द ट्राइबल पीपल आर स्कैटर्ड अक्रॉस द इंडिया शेड्यूल्ड कास्ट पीपल ओ बी सी पीपल आर एक्चुअली स्कैटर्ड अक्रॉस द इंडिया बट द ट्राइबल्स आर नॉट स्कैटर्ड अक्रॉस द इंडिया देर आर सर्टेन स्टेट्स वेयर देयर इज मच हाइयर पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ट्राइबल फॉर एग्जाम्पल ओडिशा ओडिशा छत्तीसगढ़ दे हैव हाई ओडिशा झारखंड ओडिशा झारखंड छत्तीसगढ़ दे हैव हाई पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ट्राइबल वेन यू टेक द एग्जाम्पल सच एज द हरियाणा देर इज वाइन देर इज ऑलमोस्ट नो पॉपुलेशन ऑफ ट्राइबल इन टू द हरियाणा क्लियर सो ट्राइबल पीपल आर नॉट एक्स existing in a uniform manner throughout the states in some states they are more and even wherever they are more there are very very less areas where they are actually in some sub districts many a times they are scattered throughout the state so there it is going to be our problem okay now moving on now moving on where no child is left behind now recently what has happened there is the human development index that has been released now in the human developmental index india's rank is 132 out of 191 countries now the human developmental index the human development index rank of india is not very much good understand this particular thing first of all uh, in the prelims examination there are the questions also that come onto the reports so first of all let's understand that what this human development index is all about from the prelims point of view so human development index hdi it is released by the united nation development program undp and in this particular thing there are the countries development that is seen on to the basis of three parameters three basic dimensions find what are the three basic dimensions on which the development will be seen number 1 healthy life number 2 education and number 3 standard of living and within these three within these three dimensions there are actually the four parameters that are used four indicators that are used now what are these indicators there is number 1 the life expectancy at birth okay life expectancy at birth number 2 is the mean year of schooling number 3 is the expected year of schooling and number 4 is the gross national income per capita gross national income per capita so these are the four indicators and within the four indicators there are the three there are the three basic dimensions okay as per this the hdi ranking of a country is calculated who releases it undp now when we talk about india india's ranking into the hdi is poor across all the parameters particularly this article is talking about the education because you see this particular thing that within the hdi there are the two specific indicators mean year of schooling and expected year of schooling which are talking specifically on to the education schooling now when we talk about india recently we came out with the national education policy 2020 now this national education policy 2020 it has talked about that the education pedagogy in india is needed to be transformed it is needed to be revolutionized see earlier the education was based on the cramming rote learning mugging up of the facts etc but we need to move beyond that and we need to focus on critical thinking critical problem solving moreover understand this thing as a part of the national education policy the national mission on foundational literacy has also been started national mission on foundational literacy and numeracy has also been started now what is this national mission on literacy and uh, literacy and numeracy see according to the annual status of education report it has been seen that majority of the students into the class 5 they are not able to read the text of the class 2 so therefore the learning output is not very much good in india Lit literacy skills are very weak numeracy skills are very weak so it is provided that we want to attain the universal foundational literacy and numeracy skills fine by 2025 by 2025 this is one particular uh, goal that was taken up then then further moving on uh, sir human development index released by which country it's not released by country it is released by the undp organization okay now understand the article is talking about that how we can improve actually these foundational literacy and numeracy skills into the primary schools okay now you can only improve the foundational and literacy find uh, literacy and numeracy skills if the teachers in the schools they have the good pedagogy if they are equipped to teach the children in effective manner then only the literacy and numeracy can be improved now here there are some of the case studies that have been given across the india for example for example the exam for example the 1987 1987 
शिक्षा कर्मी प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ राजस्थान हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन नाउ शिक्षा कर्मी प्रोजेक्ट फाइन इट वॉज टेकन अप इन राजस्थान टू टैकल द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ टीचर एबसेंटिज्म so teachers many a times they don't come into the school now here what had happened the local community was made as a stakeholder in this particular project and the local communities what they did they identified and they, they trained the local persons fine and they themselves created the teachers out of the local people that was there now this particular program was good but actually it did not transformed then in a bigger kind of a project but by the shiksha karmi project the community held the responsibility of good teaching then there is the next is the bihar education project that was taken now in the bihar education project project in 1990s this project was aiming to universalize the primary education and in this particular development how you will universalize the primary education by training the good teachers and therefore a 10 day residential in service training program for teachers was designed this was called as the ujala module in this particular thing the teachers will be called they will be housed into the school and in 10 day they will be given a training as how to teach pedagogical skills will be improved but there actually was a challenge because the schools was not in the good conditions and they were not able to provide the residential facility to the teachers when we see the condition of the schools now okay many of the schools they don't have running water they don't have clean toilets okay so this is something so this is something that is a problem and actually this particular scheme also did not made a lot of impact then uh, what happened there is a lok lok jumbish lok jumbish that is the people's movement for education for all which was again launched in 1992 in rajasthan and in this particular direction what happened the innovation and civil society partnership was envisaged and the civil societies what they did they demonstrated in the tribal districts as how the education is to be carried they they, they sensitize the communities there okay now further moving on in the direction of the education in 1993 there is one very important judgment of the supreme court that is the unni krishnan versus state of andhra pradesh now this particular judgment had provided that the right to education fine up to the age of 14 will be the fundamental right and in this particular direction the district primary education program was also started to provide the fundamental right of education finally the 86th constitutional amendment act came finally the 86th constitutional amendment act came which again talked about the right to education ओके सर्व शिक्षा अभियान के सर्व शिक्षा अभियान के ओके विच टॉक्स अबाउट अगेन द यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ द एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन ओके नाउ अंडरस्टैंड दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट व्हाट इज द लॉजिक दैट वी आर सीइंग ऑल दीज पर्टिकुलर डेवलपमेंट्स नाउ सी दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट ओवर द इयर्स द सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज recognized way back before the 86 constitutional amendment act that the right to education is a fundamental right we by the 86 constitutional amendment act created the article number 21a as a right to education sarv shiksha abhiyan came but actually the education has not been improved why it has not been improved because we are not able we are not able to attract the talented teachers because the teachers are not there they are not able to incite the enthusiasm into the children for the education so therefore what we need to focus we need to focus on a way as how we can recruit good teachers and how we can establish teacher developmental institutions across the country now see this particular thing for that there are certain way forwards that have been given number 1 number 1 uh, what we need to do we need to provide the direct funds to the schools so that the schools can hire the teachers now understand many a times there are so many of the vacancies into the schools okay and the schools are always dependent on the state government that the state government will be hiring the teachers for them so directly give them funding to the schools so that they can hire the teachers and can fulfill fill the teacher vacancies okay the uh, community and panchayats are needed to be connected in this particular mechanisms panchayats should ask the accountability from school if the school is not able to provide the good education then the panchayat and the community fine fine uh, women self help group can also ensure that local households own the initiative clear communities local people they can discipline the teachers okay if the teachers are not doing their function if the funds are being misused for example the fund came for in the school for the building of some playground or some lab but that fund has been misused for such kind of a thing so for the for seeing the funds the functions and functionary that they are doing their work the community women self help group etc can be involved then next that is talking about is that basically jab panchayati raj rural and development ministries they can work together to make 
to make the education to to provide the education to the rural households so ministry of panchayati raj rural and development ministries need to come together after that after that it has also been provided now see the prathams read india campaign and the Aza, azim premji foundation's large scale efforts campaign it is going on now this particular campaign aims to provide the good quality of governance it aims it aims to provide the good quality of teacher good quality of aids as well as it aims also to provide that how the schools can improve their governance so the read india campaign of pratham ngo azim premji foundation they are teaching the schools good governance skills and all such kind of a thing apart from that there are other civil societies also for example gyan shala saksham Central Square Foundation, Room to Read, Akshara. Now, all of them, all of them can provide good pedagogical skills, can provide good governance skills, can provide aids to the schools as how they can provide the effective education. So, we need to use these civil societies and organizations. After that, there is a Sampark Foundation, okay, Sampark Foundation, which uses technology for the teacher development, okay. They provide the innovative skills to the teachers, they train the teachers. These kind of NGOs can also be used. So, the point is that when we are talking about improving the teachers, improving the teaching standards into the schools, improving the learning outcomes into the student, we need to first focus on to the students, okay. So, that is something from where we need to start. Now moving to the next article, I believe guys this is actually a very good article and a very good dimension has been given and particularly the case studies that have been given throughout this particular article, they are excellent. Please directly note it down and please use it in your answers. Now, the shape of Indian economic pie must change, okay. This particular article will see with respect to the GS paper number 3, issues related to Indian economy, okay. Now, what has happened from the past one week, there is one particular thing which is coming again and again into the news. That is the EWS judgment that has been given by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court had upheld that the 10% judge, 10% uh, reservation given to the economically weaker section, it is fine. It is constitutional. It is not wrong. Now, the question which has come when this uh, 103rd Constitutional Amendment Act has been upheld, the question that is coming is that uh, the court was... Uh, now, the question that is coming is that who were being discriminated against? What is the nature of discrimination? What are, uh, which remedies are justifiable? Now, you see this thing. What has happened? Supreme Court upheld the EWS reservation. Now, the people are criticizing it. People are saying this thing that reservation are always given to address the discrimination. SC, ST, OBCs, their reservation makes a sense. Particularly the SC's reservation makes sense because they were discriminated. But EWS, they were never discriminated. Government is using the reservation scheme just for the poverty alleviation. These types of questions are coming. Now, actually the article is talking about this particular thing that today when we are talking about the reservation in jobs and education, they have been made as a legal remedies. Okay, now you see this thing. When a person is poor, we aim to deal with that particular person's poverty by giving that particular person subsidies and freebies. Now, these subsidies and freebies are the material compensation that are being given to a person. Okay. Up, now, the country gives at two points some compensation, material compensation by freebies and the legal compensation by providing them reservation. That is something that all the countries focus upon. Now, you see this particular thing. Today, when we talk about India, we have to give reservation. We have to give economic compensation into the name of freebies. You need to ask a question that why there is a need to give it. The need come here because right now the economy, the shape of Indian economy is distorted. Decent jobs are not there. Social security is available to very few people. Good education, health care, it is not available. Okay, economic growth is not coming. Fine, government cannot deliver basically the ability of government to deliver social security, it is limited. The point is that as economic deprivations are there, good governance is not there, employment is not there, inflation is very much high, people are in deprivations and people need the reservations and the subsidies and freebies to strive. Now today, the government are struggling to meet the conflicting demands on two levels. For example, on one hand, there is ease of doing business. And on other hand, there is a ease of earning and earning and living. Now, when we talk about the ease of earning and living, you need to give more and more rights to the workers. If you give more rights to the worker, ease of doing business might get impacted because the corporate houses will say that in this particular country, there are so much of the labor compliances, there are so much of the labor laws, we cannot simply meet them. So, ease of doing business will impact if you give more rights to the labor. 
if you give less rights to the laborers ease of doing business will be good but those laborers ease of living ease of earning will get will will go in the problematic now we see this particular thing that the government is focusing on populism what is populism populism is a way by which you just try to attract more and more people now you see this thing on the left now the political parties they can be the left wing political parties they can be the right wing political parties left wing political parties will be talking about equality rights for the vulnerable sections and all such right wing political parties will talk about maintaining the hierarchy maintaining the order maintaining the tradition etc all the type of parties left wing political parties right wing political parties have their own type of populism for example left wing political parties okay they have a populism of a socialist voice they demand rights for all the workers across the race and religion okay then on to the right wing there is a populism which has this particular kind of an undertone they will talk about protecting racial and religious majorities from the immigrants from the people coming from the neighboring countries they will focus on that so understand that right now both the left and the right wing political parties are just going into the populism they are attracting the people they are not handling the economic crisis economic problems so therefore people are in deprivations and what they need they'll need the reservation they'll need the subsidies that is only thing that they are going to depend upon so a french thinker thomas piketty has written a book by the name of capital and ideology and in this particular book he has said that the society is divided in three classes a clerical or a religious class a noble class a warrior a, a warrior class and a common laborer class clear now when we talk about the hindu society in hindu society also we find that the division is there on to the four lines okay there are the four varnas okay so the divisions in the societies have been there the same thing goes in the india also now you see this thing that right now the inequalities have increased even more and as inequalities have increased even more today we the state need to be more active need to focus that how the genuine development of the people come so that the people don't depend too much on the reservation freebies subsidies etc understand this particular thing here there is a quotation of the abraham lincoln that lincoln that has been given so after the us civil war the abraham lincoln said money will he said that he dreamed of a future he dreamed of a future where money will cease to be the master and will become the servant of the humanity and democracy will rise superior to the money power this was the dream this was the dream that the abraham lincoln had but is that dream has that dream fulfilled no we see this particular thing that the, there is a victory of men monetarism now what are the monetarism monetarist are the economists who had supported the capitalist capitalism now the monetarist thinkers they have become victorious okay over the keynesian model so key, key the keynesian think uh, economics are the ones who promote the welfare more so the cap the thinkers or the economists who are promoting more of capitalism they have emerged victorious now we see this particular thing that the roles of the bank and financial institution was to provide lubrications to the real economy but what is happening what what is happening we find this particular thing that these banks etc have not plugged the inequalities have not provided the finance to the people who needed the most today we see this particular thing that the rules of economic economy are being set by the wealthiest people wealthiest people in their own favor they are setting up the rule of economy crony capitalism is going on okay we see this particular thing that india has the largest number of working age people in the world okay and at the same time we also find that the lowest employment elasticities are there in india employment elasticity what it means it means that how many number of jobs will be created when the gdp will increase so we see this particular thing that as the gdp is increasing more number of jobs are not getting created and because of that particular thing we find that india is one of the most unequal society in the world that is existing today so the point that i am raising here is that india has not been has not been successful to bring the economic reforms at the level at which they were needed and because of that particular thing all these issues are coming now moving to the next article now this particular article guys talks about the iran protest okay and very generic idea we need to take we don't need to go too much into the detail in this particular article so you see this particular thing that right now in the iran the protests are going on for the human dignity and individual rights now first of all why the iran protest have started so recently what happened a women in the iran was got arrested because 
it was said that she had not worn the hijab in a proper way so there is the morality policing there is a morality policing that happened into the iran that women got arrested and that women died in the custody okay so that is something that had happened and after that what has happened thousands and thousands of people in the iran they have come onto the street they are questioning the government as how why the government has curbed all the human rights there how hundreds and thousands of people have been arrested even the children young girls they have been arrested now the article is talking about that presently what is happening this particular protest movement is very important why the source of discontent is not economic it's not political the discontentment is because the human dignity individual rights have not been recognized and the global attention has also been given on this particular direction for example what has happened recently the american government find they have Uh, they have asked to remove the iran from the un's commission on the status of women why because the uh, iran has not been able to iran has not been able to preserve the rights of the women fine on the women traditional ideas etc are being imposed even the canada had condemned the iranian regime okay it's a decision to impose a death penalty on some detained protesters this particular thing has been criticized by the canada in india also the activists have cut down their uh, hairs and have burned the hijab in the protest so these these are the ways as how the countries had responded and this is good that the women in the iran people in the iran are coming forward because of not economic and political consideration but because of the human rights that are there clear so that is all about that article climate change debates stall while earth heats up now this particular article guys is just giving us some graphs okay just what you can do you can uh, see these graphs in the synoptic notes what these graphs are graphs are just showing which is very much obvious fine number one the graph is showing that what is the contribution of the different different countries into the co2 emission how the co2 emissions have increased dramatically around the 9 uh, after around 18th and 19th century and particularly into the 21st century how the temperature anomaly is increasing okay all these particular things have been provided so just just you can see this particular article however in absolute numbers etc you don't need to remember it okay biden g looks to uh, responsibly manage competition amid rising tensions so recently what has happened now joe biden and the xi jinping's bilateral talks have been held in these bilateral talks both the countries both the countries have provided this particular thing that they need to responsibly manage the intensifying competition between these two countries both of the leaders have provided this particular thing that they are the big competitors and their competition should not be such that it impacts the country's well being okay so the global stability is something that is needed to be kept in mind clear now the usa has provided this thing very clearly that they will be competing with the china okay they will be competing with the china they will invest in their capabilities in the home as well as in the other countries but make sure that the competition does not go into the conflict moreover usa has also talked about that the china has leading to the human right violations into the xinjiang tibet hong kong fine this is something that the china should not be going in okay so this is just a kind of a meet that has happened you don't need to go too much in detail therefore i am not going too much into the detail because fine just they have exchanged the pleasantries the, the talks that had happened anything concrete has not come out of that clear supreme court says forced conversions may affect the national security freedom of religion now when we talk about article number 25 in the indian constitution it talks about right to religion but right to religion doesn't entails the forced conversion so forcefully when the people are getting converted okay sometimes economic force is being put on to the people the people from sc and st communities they are being given some free food etc so economic coercion is given on to the people so that particular thing is to be identified okay actually guys in the article there is no substance just supreme court has asked the government that what you have done to tackle the forced conversions that are happening just that's it fine so i will not suggest you to go too much deep in this particular article just supreme court has said that they might affect national security freedom of religion you should do something and what you have done fine and now the means practice question for today question says to achieve the objective of foundational literacy and numeracy in all primary schools there is need to especially focus on community connect and parental involvement analyze so this question is from gs paper number 2 issues related to education it will be a 10 marker question fine please write it and uh, try to identify the dimensions it is directly from the editorial article that has come that is all for today i hope guys that you have understood it
fine if you have liked the video please do hit the like button please do leave your comments now we'll be meeting tomorrow till then take care of yourselves thank you so much